Hey guys, it's Chris, and today we are going to be upgrading the Amiga 600 ROM to the 3.2 point ROM kick. It's still going to say Kickstart 3.2, but it's going to have a new number on the end, and it's not going to be 47.96 anymore. It's like 47.100 or something like that. I forget. Anyway, to accomplish this, I have a EE Prom in here, which is erasable. We're going to be using the China Big Moon UV Light EEPROM eraser. I think I might have documented this in the past. It has the big Ghostbusters trap uh, UV, makes your eyeballs hurt light. Slides into a drawer. You set the timer for five minutes, which is, or ten minutes, which is number one on this thing. And we're going to write that with the XG Pro 2 with the 27C. 160, 322, 400, and 800 adapter. That's this guy. That black line is so I know where to put the ROM. Anyway, she goes in here like this. Yep. She goes in here like this, and this folds down. This uses USB 1 on the Type A connector. We're going to plop that in here like so, and just let her sit. Fire up the XG Pro program on Windows over here. Let's open the Amiga 600. Now I have a mouse and my HDMI cable. We're going to be using the Gennard extractor just in case. I have some blank ROMs in case this eraser does not work. So ever so carefully we're going to lift up in the front and pull our power cord out of here and slowly and carefully move this just like that. Here's our current 3.2 ROM. This is, this is, this has a sticker over it so we're going to be using the Gennard and just sticking it on here and giving it a squish and that comes right out. So let me, let me peel the sticker off of this bad boy. Okay, that didn't take but a second. I got some goop on here. 27C 400 ROM. But it needs to be erased. How do I erase it? I got this Big Moon China EEPROM eraser off of eBooker a while back and it's super simple. You put this in here like this. I kind of stick it right in the middle and I turn this to one and then I turn it on. And then, I like to check and make sure the light is coming on. See that glow? That means that you're cooking with bacon. I will let this sit in here for five minutes. It's 2.55 p.m. according to the Pixu. 2.59, close enough. Turn this off. Sometimes these can be quite toasty when you remove them. So just be... Uh, Cautious of that. Here you go, one ROM. Now what I'm going to do is scoot you on in here and we're going to flash this sucker. So we're going to insert this ROM in here, lock it down, and then on the Windows screen here I'm going to verify that it's blank. How do I do that? I hit this button that says blank and I say blank check. Device is blank. Cool. How do I flash it? Well, we go load up here, browse. This is my 321 update ROM. I'm going to choose the CDTV A500 600 2000. And I'm going to say OK. You can see it puts some words in here. If you don't see words, great. I uncheck the check ID, so make sure this is not selected. I like to make my voltage on an AMD chip 12.5 because that's what the spec sheet says it's rated at. You can push it at 13, but whatever. And then you just hit this program button. Are you sure? Yep, programming. Programming flash. It takes about a minute. Flash succeeded. It verified. We're good. We're done this. I printed myself a label on the old P-Touch. It says 321A56-1000. We're going to use that to cover up the UV window. Although, this is such a ROM that you have to erase with massive light. I don't think you ever have to really worry about it. Now, there's a couple features we're going to check. Number one, the Furia is picky as can be. So... First, what we're going to do is make sure this boots. Now remember on the 600 you have the extra two pins, so make sure you're to the right of it. Some of the other 500 models are the same. Set. 
let's hit it and see what happens and then I'm going to take the hard drive and floppy drive out because I want to see the new screen. Does this even work? 3, 2, 1. Furia is pickier than anything I ever met in my life. Or am I? Let's see. I have a I have the bordering. There we go. And we are in like Flynn. I think I'm in Pal. What am I in? I don't know. Let's see. NTSC. There we go. Why was I in Pal? I was working on another motherboard that was in Pal. Alright. So we're good. Three, two, one. Let's see what the ROM says on about. It still says three dot two. Uh, ROM. Now, it is a 3.2 ROM. It just has a newer version. 102 is the kickstart, not 47.96. You'll see that right here. So, now, that works. We know it's cool. We're going to shut the Amiga 600 off. I'm going to remove the compact flash adapter entirely. I'm also going to remove the power from my floppy drive. So this is the screen you're going to see. It's not really red. It's more like a burgundy. They call it red. I don't know. So this is what you see when you have no boot device. Instead of the blue, nice Amiga Kickstart. I don't know. Now we're going to turn it off. We're going to plug in the floppy drive again. There's our standard boot screen with the purple and the disc insertion. Same thing. 3.2 Kickstart version 47.102. This is with a floppy plugged in. You can hear it clicking away. So that means I have a floppy drive plugged in. If you get that red screen, that means you have no boot device at all. Okay, and I forgot to plug in my Furia. I'm using the GPIO header pins. 3.3 uh, volts, pin 1 and 2 are the ground on that. So there we go. That is your 3.2.1 ROM upgrade with an erase. A reflash on the EEPROM and a check for what the two boot screens are, your normal one, and one if you have no devices connected. Our kickstart version is 47.102, 2021 Hyperion Entertainment CVBA. Thank you guys at Hyperion for making this. This update fixes so many issues that I had with 3.2 on all the various machines. The Fury itself is picky as all get out. If you own a Furia, this is the red board. It is a revision, I don't know, revision 3. It's the 2 chip model. If you have this card and you're having weird issues where it won't boot anything but 3.1, go for a Transcend industrial grade compact flash card. I only got a 4 gig and that's totally fine for me. Um, I am also using an adapter that is called Amiga CF-IDE adapter. It is a 44 pin angled it was like thirteen dollars uh, or something like that. Maybe more. I forget. So I'm gonna do that. But that is all I got for now. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something.